So ladies, I want to tell you, show you how to use tool embroidery tool shed. This is a really simple program to use. And let me just get that out of here. Okay, so when you bring up tool shed, this is kind of what it's going to look like when you first open it. You see up here, all the way up here, I'm kind of flashing my cursor here. You see up in these corners, there's really not not many tools to use. It's a very limited program because it's free. But one of the things it will do will allow us to resize our designs, which is really important. Now, follow my cursor down to here. And this is usually what happens when you open up the, uh, the program, they have the shopping cart uh, open because they want you to shop. So if you wanted to purchase Perfect Pro Embroidery, Perfect Embroidery Pro or My Quilt Planner, this is where you would do it, okay? But we're not gonna go shopping right now because we're in class. What I want you to do is I want you to take your cursor and just move it over two, two slots to the left to the sequence view, the sequence view looks like a bullet list. It looks like it's got three little blue dots and some dashes. I want you to click on that. All right, so now we have our sequence view. Now we still need to bring in a design so that we can resize it. So to bring in any file, we're going to go over here on the upper left-hand corner to the file button. We're going to click on it and we're going to open our C2S file. So I've already put mine on my desktop. So here you can see the desktop is here. And it, and um, I have my QU Maple A design and you notice it's a C2S file format and I have my QU Maple B dot C2S file. So I want both of those. So I'm gonna click on the first one. I'm gonna hold down the shift key on my computer hold down the shift key to select both of them at the same time. And then you're just gonna go down here and just click open. Okay, now both of those designs will show up in our embroidery tool shed. And you can see I've got a file. I've, well, right now we're looking at the QUB C2S. And if I click on the other tab, we will have the A file. Now, there is one thing I want to point out to you because I don't know how your, how your embroidery tool shed is going to open up, but right up at the very top and on the side bars, right up here and then right over on the side, you will notice that we have millimeters. We are in millimeters because it says MM right over here. So what I want to do is I want to put my cursor right somewhere in that little tape measure, somewhere in that ruler, and I want to right mouse click on uh, in there. Once I mouse right click, I will get a drop down menu and I want to change that drop down menu to inches so that it makes more sense to us. So now you see we are in inches. Again, you bring the cursor in the middle, you right mouse click, and you can change between metric and inches right in that area, okay? So now we're in inches. Now in our, we're gonna go into that sequence view again. The sequence view is, if you look over here, the sequence view is this entire box, okay? So everything in this box is everything that has to do um, with the different parts of design. So if I had like 10, 10 different, design parts, they would all be listed there. But I just have one continual run stitch. So that's why we have just one design. But if you look over here, we have a plus sign. So if I click on that plus sign, I get um, the thread color change. So that's my design. If I click on the um, little eye next to it, my design disappears on screen. That just means it's it's we shut your eyes, you can't see it. And then the next button is a lock button. Try not to hit that because it won't allow you to do anything with the design if that is locked, okay? Um, so if ever you're trying to resize and it won't let you resize, it's probably because you have your lock 
the design locked so it cannot be changed okay and then the last one is of course the design so once i click on this design that i have in screen now I have what we call up here, we call this a property box. It, it doesn't really say the property box, but that's what it is. And the property box basically is, is all the different properties for the design. Okay, it tells us all about, you know, the design. So the design that I brought in, for example, it tells us that the width of the, the design is 5.28. The height of the design is 9.5. We have this thing that is checked that's called maintain aspect ratio, and we have regenerate stitches. We also have the position on the X and Y coordinate, which you'll never, probably never use, okay? But it should be on zero, zero, because that tells us our design is in the middle. Um, we don't want to rotate this. We don't want to mirror, we don't want to flip it. But if you want, you know, we don't want to mess with any of that for what we're doing. And then the most important button of all on this thing is the apply button, okay? If, if we make changes, we have to hit the apply. We have to apply the changes. If you don't apply the changes, you don't make the changes, okay? So you have to click the apply button. All right, so in our um, document, the, in our quilting calculator, we wanted to change the width of the design to 5.31. If I were to just change this number to 5.31, my height number would also change. And the reason why my height it will also change is because I have the maintain aspect ratio button still on. Okay, I want to take that off. I want to turn it off. So I can click in it to turn it on. I can click in it to turn it off. I want to turn it off. Now, the maintain aspect ratio means that if I change the dimensions of the width, it's automatically going to change the dimensions of the height proportionally. So that would be really good if you want to take a three inch cornerstone design and change it to an eight inch cornerstone design or eight inch design, you would just simply change the width and the height would automatically change with it, okay? But for edge to edge, we want to individually change the width and then change the height individually. So the width we had at 5.31, so I'm going to highlight the two eight, and I'm just going to type in the number 31 right behind it. All right. Um, I definitely want it to regenerate stitches. Um, again, if I'm taking a three inch design and making it an eight inch design, we want to add some extra stitches in there. So we definitely want to just keep the regenerate stitches button on. Okay, now to really make this change in my width, I don't need to do anything with the height because we want the height to be 9.5. But to make the change for the width at 3.31, I got to click that apply button. If I don't click that apply button, nothing's going to change. So there, now I've clicked it. Now it's set in stone. My design now is um, 5.31 by 9.5. All right. And that's the maple, the A file. The one that's highlighted down here is the one I've just changed. It's got the darker lettering. <clears throat> now, all I have to do is go up to file, which is way up here in the left-hand corner. So go up here to file. You're gonna left mouse click on it and you want to do a save as because we're gonna save this as a different in a different format. So we want to save it as and now we get choices, okay? First of all, I do want to put it on my desktop. And so I have clicked the desktop button. And then I'm going to leave the name the same. I don't need to change the name. But I do want to save as type. I want to change that because right now it says I'm saving this as a C2S file. I don't want to save it as a C2S file. I want to save it to a file format that my embroidery machine can read. And I'm gonna be doing this on a, um, so here you have, well, let me just say, you, here you have all your formats. So if you want to do Bernina, you're gonna do the EXP. If you wanna do FOF, you probably do the VP, FOF or Viking, you're gonna do the VP3. 
Um, if you're going to change to, did we talk about Bernina? Yes, we talked about Bernina. Um, if you're going to do baby lock or brother, you want to go up to the probably the PES version six. If you want to do Janome or Elna, you would go to the JEF. So it's all laid out. Now, you do have a lot of different versions for Baby Lock Brother. We tend to save everything in the uh, uh, v V6. That's um, the most stable across all, all brands of Baby Lock machines. Um, however, I'm going to, because I have a brand new Baby Lock Solaris and I am update on everything I own, I'm going to do the version nine because I know my machine will read it because I keep up to date on all my software. All right, so I'm going to click that button. Now you will look down here at your file and it says qumapleA.pes and it says I'm going to save it to the Baby Lock Bernina version and I'm going to save it on my desktop so I can find it. Then I'm just going to hit save. Now let's do all that again with the, uh, the, the B file down here. So we're going to click on the tab for the B file. We're going to go to the sequence view and click on the design so that our property information shows up. We're going to make sure that the maintain aspect ratio is turned off. And then we're going to change our width to 31. And I, there we go. Make sure that decimal's in there, because if you don't have that decimal in there, the width is going to be 531 inches, and you don't want that. Okay, and then we're going to click apply to make the change. And I did notice something. I am in millimeters again, uh, because this is a different file. So I am going to right mouse click and also change that to inches. All right, then I'm going to click apply again just to make sure. I got that right. Now I would do the same thing. I'm going to uh, save it, file, save as. I'm going to put it on my desktop so I can find it. And I'm going to go to the save as type. And I'm going to change that to my machine format. So now I've got both designs. And I believe they're both here on my let me just minimize for a second. And there's a zoom. I think I can minimize that. And here I have the maple PES and yes, the maple A and B. And they're right here. And I can just stick my jump drive in there and I can just save, save it to my jump drive. Now there's um, one more thing I just want to show you that's just kind of fun, just since we're in here. One of the things that the uh, embroidery tool should has is a replay. So I'm going to take this bead as, and the replay button is right up here. It looks like a little speedometer like you might have on a car. And I'm going to click on that. And now I've got this little uh, movie strip that's just appeared. I've got this, this long black line. This is a that's my stitches. That's my design. If, if I were doing a design with lots of different colors, this might be black, black and red and blue. It'd be all kinds of different colors, but it's just one black line. So it's all one color. And then you have your speed control over here. I can, I usually watch things at a medium speed, but you can watch it at a slow speed or a high speed. We'll put it back in the middle. And then you're just going to click on the button to watch it simulate the stitching of the design so he and uh, let me just yeah let me get back in there and here we go so you can actually sit there and watch how a design is going to stitch out sometimes that's a good thing to do so you just kind of have an you're familiar with how it's going to stitch out uh on your quilt you know and if you get bored like me and you want to just kind of Fast forward that, you can just pull that little blue bar forward and back too. So I do that too sometimes when I just want to check just the very last part of a design, you know. So that's kind of fun. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that. So that's pretty much what Toolshed does for you. It's it's very, it's cheap, free. And, you know, there are other buttons here. This one is um, the little cube shows you what it looks like realistically. Of course, the magnifying glass lets you zoom in. Um, and this little button here shows the stitches. So if I have it off, let me just zoom in even more. Like zoom in a whole lot for you guys. So I've got, if I click on, um, 
Let me take a realistic view. So when I click on that button, you can see all my little individual stitches that are going to go around. Okay. And sometimes when you zoom in a whole, whole lot, they start looking very angular. So try not to zoom in too much. And then if I click that off, I don't see my stitches. Uh, little cubes for realistic. You know, if you ever want to measure something like how big is that circle? You know, you can just measure it across. That's, you know, I, what, what you would do is just put the, uh, bring the little ruler over, left mouse click and just bring it across and you can measure whatever you want to measure. But I, you, you don't need to use any of that with what we're doing. Hey, one other thing too, if you double left mouse click on the magnifying glass, like hit it, like I'm a left mouse click tw two times real fast, one, two, it takes your design back out to normal view. All right. Thank you.